Welcome to P.5 Factoring Polynomials. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and define what factoring means. Factoring means to rewrite a product and when I say a product, I mean something times something. In any factoring, the first step is to always look for the greatest common factor. This is also known as the GCF. So we want to factor out the greatest common factor in part, example 1, part A. We have 18x to the third power plus 27x squared. We have two terms here. We have 18x to the third power and we have 27x squared. What we want to do is we want to look at the coefficient of each term, 18 and 27, and we want to find the greatest factor that comes out of both 18 and 27. Okay? Well, think about 18. 18 is actually 2 times 9, which is the same thing as 2 times 3 times 3. 2 times 3 times 3. And 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. And notice how I broke them down to their prime factors. If you look at it carefully, do you notice how they both share or have in common 2 factors of 3? So basically they have 3 times 3 in common or they have 9 in common. So 9 is the greatest common factor between 18 and 27. Now you want to look at x to the third and x squared. x to the third is x times x times x, and x squared is x times x. What is the greatest number of x factors do they have in common? They both have one factor of x in common. They both have two factors of x in common, and that's it. So our GCF is going to be 9x squared. And some people can just look at that problem and say, well, 18 and 27, the biggest number or the biggest factor that comes out of both of those is 9, and that's perfectly fine. I'm going to rewrite that because it's a little messy. So 9x squared. Okay. What we're going to basically do is we're going to do the distributive property backwards. So we have to figure out what goes in here. Multiply by 9x squared will give me the 18x cubed back. So 9 times what will give me 18 back, that will be the 2, and x squared times what will give me a q back, x. 9 times what will give me a positive 27 back, we need a positive 3, and then we don't need any more x squared, we are pulled all those out. So all the top students, you can actually check the factoring by pulling out the greatest common factor by doing the distributive property. So here is my answer, but let's go ahead and distribute in our head mentally. If I take 9x squared times 2x, I should get 18x to the third power, and I do. When I take 9x squared times 3, I get 27x squared, or plus 27x squared, and that's right there. Okay? So whenever you're trying to find the GCF, you want to find the greatest common factor between the coefficients of the term and the greatest common factor between the variables, and you're really going to pull out the lowest power. So here the power of 2 is what we pulled out, the so x squared. Now, some students will look at this problem and they'll say, well, I think 3 is the com a common factor between 18 and 27. And it is. 3 does come out of 18, and 3 does come out of 27. Well, let's look at this carefully. I'm putting wrong here because this isn't correct. If I pulled out 3x squared, what I would have left to get this back, I would need a 6x. And then I would need a plus 9 to get this back. Okay. The problem with that is, when you look at this and you want to pull out the gray con factor, do you notice that 6 and 9 have 3 in common? So you only pull, you pull out a common factor, but you didn't pull out the greatest one. So, you can see that we should have pulled out a 9 and not just a 3. Okay, 
in part B, we have um, x squared times the quantity x plus 5 plus 7 times the quantity of x plus 5. We actually have two terms, term separated by addition. We have this right here and this right here. Now look carefully, in this term you have a factor of x plus 5 and you have a factor of x plus 5 also. What you can do is you can go ahead and pull that out. And then what you have left is to get all this back, you need this. You have x squared. And to get this back, you need the plus 7. The plus 7. We're going to see a lot of problems that look just like example 1b. And we'll see that in the next um, example. Okay, so example 2. I want to factor by grouping. Whenever you do any factoring problem, you always want to pull out the greatest common factor. If so I look at all these terms, one, two, three, four terms, and the number one, four, three, and twelve, they have nothing in common other than the factor of one. So that's not really anything we need to worry about. Now I look at the variables, and I see I have x to the third, x squared, x, and here I have no x's. So I, so I can't pull out any x's because they all don't have x's in common. So in this problem, there is no greatest common factor. So no GCF. But I looked. I always look because you always want to look for the greatest common factor whenever you're factoring. The first step. While it is your first step, you will not always find a greatest common factor. But if you have one, you need to pull it out. So again, this example does not have a greatest common factor. So now we're going to do something called factoring by grouping. And that's what you do when you have four terms. I tell students that when you're factoring by grouping, what you want to do is you want to group the first two terms together and the second two terms together. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the second two terms for a second. In the first two terms, x to the third plus 4x squared, you find a common factor, the greatest common factor between those two terms. And between these two terms, the greatest common factor is going to be x squared. I can pull out a 1, but I don't really write the 1 down. And then I have an x squared that comes out of both of those. What do I have left? Well, I need another x to get the x cubed. I need a plus 4 to get the plus 4x squared. Now, what I want to do is I want you to ignore the first two and look at the second two terms. You always pull down the sign of the first of the two second terms. So here, the second, the first of the two in the second group. So I'm going to pull out the plus sign. And then between the 3x and the 12, a 3 comes out. And now I have, let me go ahead and get rid of this little arrow so we can um, focus on work here. Now I need an x to get the 3x back. And I need a plus 4 to get the plus 12 back. Okay. And now do you notice that there is a common factor of x plus 4 and x plus 4? So our first factor is x plus 4. And then we need x squared plus 3. And that came from this and this. Remember, factored form means something times something. We have something times something. That's factored form. OK, in the next example, we have 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. And again, in all four terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, the only thing they have in common in terms of the coefficients is just 1. They all have x's except for the 4, which has no x's, so there's no GCF in this problem. What we're going to do now we're going to group. We're going to group the first two and the second two. And the first two between a 3 and a 2, I can't pull a number out, but I can pull out x squared. So I have 3x minus 2, but that will give me all this back. Now for the second two, remember you pull up the sign of the first term in the second group, so I have a minus. Between 6 and 4, I can pull out 2. So now what do I need? I need something negative 2 times what will give me this back? And I would need a 3. Now I'll need x to get the negative 6 back. The negative 2 times what will give me the plus 4. And I would need a negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 will give me the plus 4. Okay. Now again, do you notice that these match right here? And they always should. 
if you're doing grouping correctly. And so I get 3x squared, my first factor, and then x squared minus 2 is my second factor. Okay. okay, now we're starting to factor trinomials, and trinomials again are three terms. And factoring three terms can be done by many methods. You may recall the trial and error method from high school, and the book uses this method. I like the trial and error method sometimes. I also like the AC method for factoring other trinomials, um, other type of trinomials. And I'm going to show you both ways. But whichever way you choose, you need to always check your answer by foiling. And I'm going to show you guys that in just a couple minutes. Okay, we have two examples, and I tell students that I like trial and error whenever I have a trinomial and the leading coefficient is 1. I always use trial and error. It's very simple and easy to check. Okay? So if I have a trinomial, the leading coefficient is 1, that means that the leading coefficient, the first um, term with the highest degree, has a coefficient of 1. That's what the leading coefficient means. So, both these examples here, I have a leading coefficient of 1. So I know these come from two factors, and they're both binomials, and I'm going to put an x and x in the first position because I know x times x will give me the x squared. I'm trying to do foil backwards. Now i got to find two numbers that multiply to give me 8 to put right here and here. And the two numbers that multiply to give you 8 are 1 and 8, and 2 and 4. Okay. Now i got to find a pair that somehow will give me 6 or plus 6, and I'm going to use this pair right here. Now, I want two numbers that multiply to give me a positive 8, but then add to give me a plus 6. It looks like just 2 and 4 would work. So, I'm going to go ahead and put plus 2 and plus 4. And with trial, with trial and error, you just always got to check it work for sure to make sure your factors are correct. Okay, so this, this is my factors. But if I do first times first, I get x squared, and there it is right there. If I do outer times outer, which would be this times this, I get 4x. I do inner times inner, to be 2, I get 2x. And I add those together, I get 6x. And that's what it is right here. And I do last times last, it would be this one and this one. I get 8. And there it is right there. So it looks like I did factor that correctly. Okay, the next one I have is x squared plus 3x minus 18. Again, lean coefficient is 1, so I'm going to use trial and error. So I'm going to go ahead and write two factors. In the first position, I'm going to put x and x. And then now I want two numbers to multiply to give me negative 18. I'm just going to worry about 18. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, and those are all the pairs that multiply to give me 18. Now I want them to multiply to give me negative 18, but we'll look at that in just a minute. Now I want to worry about them adding up to 3. The only pair that I could possibly make that work with would be this pair right here. Okay. So now let's go back and worry about our signs. 3 and 6 have to somehow multiply to give me negative 18, but add to give me 3. So if I make this negative, 3 negative, that'll give me negative 18 when I multiply them together. But when I add them together, I get plus 3. So that would actually give me this. Now if you had done 3 and then negative 6, well those do multiply to give you negative 18. When you add them together, you get negative 3 and you don't want negative 3. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put minus 3 and plus 6 here. And again, with trial and error, you just got to check it really quick with FOIL. So we're going to go ahead and do... Um, First times first, and there's x squared. Outer times outer, these times these, and I get 6x. Inner times inner, and I get minus 3x, and that gives me 3x, which is that. And then last times last gives me negative 18, which gives me that. Okay, so it looks like I have the correct factors. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how to factor when the leading coefficient is not 1. Before you, before we go ahead and do that, I'm going to have you guys work on a handout. And it is, like, if you were in class, I gave you a handout to work on, and it had all the X's on them. So, it is a handout. 